The stevedoring industry is a small industry by any measure with about 6,500 people in it. So when you lose seven lives and three in five months, it has an enormous impact on the family, this family, that are gathered here today. It has sent shock waves through our membership and our membership have called for this, uh, these gatherings around the country. As we speak here today, a family, a young family in Victoria are uh, burying their husband and their father of 41, 41 years of age. Far too young, far too young for such an event to occur. Never again do we want to have to come back to this park uh, to talk of the fallen, never. We as a human society are at our best when we look out for one another. And one of the most important places that we can do that is at work. That's what the union, the union movement has fought for for so long. That's what the Labour Party has fought for for so long. And that's what we stand together today as bearing witness as a community. That these gentlemen did not die in vain, that their memories are honoured, and particularly that they remind us every day of the importance of safety at work and remind us as a government of the importance of always standing up and fighting for the rights of people at work. I particularly want to acknowledge Maria who is here today representing her brother Nick who as many of you will know lost his life at Port Botany. Port Botany is until very recently in the electorate that I represented, that I represent Nick today. And I know the strength of the workforce there, the solidarity that exists amongst the workers there. And I know many of you would have felt, felt the loss that, uh, that of Nick's death. The Minister for Ports and Waterways meets reg regularly with the unions, and I, as Premier, meet regularly with Unions New South Wales. That partnership will continue, that dialogue will continue, and that particularly those policy outcomes will continue. For a union official, safety is the number one priority. Wages and conditions clearly are important, but we can always come back another day and argue about wages and conditions. We can't come back another day if the work is not there because they've been killed on the job. As a community, we think, I think, that we've become a bit complacent when it comes to the issue of workplace safety. It's an issue that's been fixed. Well, clearly, clearly that is not the case. Three deaths in five months on our wharves in Australia show that it is a problem and it's a continuing problem. Thanks to the MUA for organising this at such short notice. Thanks to all those unions who have turned up today in such big numbers. Thanks to all of you from the wharves who have turned up to one of those who have fallen and to commit to the ongoing campaign for safety on our wharves and be reassured, rest assured, of Unions New South Wales' ongoing commitment to the cause. Thank you. How many more times will we experience another death on the job? Which one of us will be next? Which one of us will not go home? That is why we're here today. It is to show respect for the lives lost, to say to the entire community that cargoes are important, but they're not more important than our lives. When we suffer, or when one suffers, we all suffer, because we believe in the collective. It is our duty and responsibility to ensure that we are safe on the job. It is our duty and responsibility to always fight for safer workplaces. And unfortunately, it's left for us to actually fight for those things. It is a tragedy that we must fight for safety on the job. Safety should be enshrined. Safety is something that we should just have as a fundamental right that no one ignores, that everyone deems as their responsibility. Christmas Eve in 2008, he lost his life at sea. Trevor Moore was a great comrade, a great shipmate, and a great loss to our union. Trevor, in fact, was what we call the Heath Ledger of the MUA. In 2009, we felt that he was going to be one of our Delegates of the Year, the ACTU's Delegates of the Year. Trevor, I can say to you, from this day on, we renew our pledge to make our ships safe ships, 
and to fight like you did to save the Australian maritime industry. Brad Gray, uh, 49, the Pacific Explorer in Brisbane, killed the 20th of February, 2010. Brad was uh, 49 years of age. He was a local Wynnum boy. He leaves a widow, Lauren, and a 17-month-old son, James. He was well-respected, and he was a well-liked member of the MUA. He was a bit of a larrikin and a practical joker, but he's very missed by all. Brad loved his four-wheel driving, and he had a real passion for life. Nick was 49, working at Port Botany aboard the Vega Gotland on the 8th of March 2010. He was survived by a loving wife and two children. Nick was a hard worker. There was nothing he wouldn't do for you. He'd be the first to say, go and have a cuppa. He was just that type of bloke. Nick's family are from the wharves, and they've always been MUA members. It was his first day on the job when he joined the MUA. His two uncles worked as maritime waterside workers for many years, his brother also. Nick loved the union and his workmates. It was a part of him and his family. We will never forget our comrade Nick. I really wanted to speak today because it's such a, a, a sombre moment and a really, really sad moment in, in our waterfront history. And um, I really wanted to share Ash's words with the audience. Um, Nick Fanos was a mate of mine from Port Botany. And it's still very, very raw out there. Um, and as you can see by his family being here as well, how, how hard it is for all the waterfront workers. So I really wanted to share Ash's words because I think they sum up everything that we're feeling very, very well. So I really wanted to share that today. No family should sit and wait at the end of the working day for a loved one who never returns. Be it a Sundance CEO or a Melbourne waterside worker, no death in the workplace is acceptable. I could use this opportunity to push for a national code of safety on the wharves, which we need. I could even lay blame. I could even cry that I may be sued for the illegal 24-hour stoppage that I'm currently on, but I'm not going to. I just ask everyone tonight, when your loved one returns from their place of work, grab them and hug them and tell them that you love them. Because you never know when your today doesn't match your yesterday. Howard, regardless of how you vote or the colour of your working collar, no one should die in the workplace. We need to make a change. Regards, Ash Hewitt, Fremantle Wharf Worker. We need to uh, focus more on, on safety facilitators on the job, like jobs that, that are just specifically there that are focusing on safety. We have them in part now, but the companies are lukewarm about it, if you know what I mean. We need them around the clock, similar to what they've got over at DP World. We want the same at Patrick's. They're on trial there at the moment, but um, as I said, the company's lukewarm about it because it's an extra wage and really... Like we said today, enough's enough. I mean, when do we start putting money in front of lives? Every worker, every company should, uh, should be under the same standard. So we know where we stand, so we know what's, what state we can bring it up to. And we can keep it there. We can maintain a minimum standard without fear of, of you know, different, different levels of safety. We should have one safety, and that's the best safety we can possibly get. My biggest problem is that um, the government ain't coming across with what we need. And I like the suit in power, and I hope we push for it. Nick was in my gang, and um, it's still something that we haven't got over yet. You know? um, we, his brother-in-law's in our gang, and uh, the two gangs that run in the same roster caught up on uh, Wednesday, and uh, the, the family's still completely overcome with grief. Uh, it has a personal effect because the waterfront's a family, mate. You know, uh, it's not just that we. We, we, you know, we work in the same industry, but we, we you know, we socialise. We, we know each other's families, wives, kids, and um, it's it's something that goes to what the, the industry is about. And has it affected us? We'll never get over this, mate. I'm telling you, we won't get over it. Uh, we're still battling the boss over uh, having safety facilitators. Uh, they don't want hatchmen. I mean, we've only had a man. Nick has only been dead two months. Uh, there is this um, dismissal in some quarters of uh, our message. Now, we're fighting hard and we're going to continue to fight hard to get a national code of safety practices on the stevedoring uh, front uh, as part of the harmonisation of, of OH&S under the 
federal Labor government, uh, with the support of the states, and uh, we want that to be underpinned by very strong regulations so that there is penalties for those who do not comply and provide a safe workplace. But in addition to that, we need a clear culture shift and an understanding on the waterfront that uh, there is an independent uh, person, a safety facilitator, a safety officer on the waterfront that can talk to the workers, listen to what their problems are, uh, communicate that to the employer, ensure the employer provides the best, best OH&S environment for those workers and report back to a uh, OH&S committee uh, so you've got a complete circle. Regulation, enforcement and also compliance in the workplace.